This video makes me a little bit worried about our Qantas flight to Australia. Welcome aboard your Qantas flight. We look forward to getting you to your destination, and in some cases, getting your luggage there too. What happened to my bag? <laughs> when flying with Qantas, you'll want to familiarise yourself with the brace position. You'll be adopting it when you try to get through to our call centre. I re- hang on, let's finish this quote. In 2022, 18th of June, call center wait times have swelled to eight hours in some cases. Now, in some cases means maybe just one or two, but eight hours. Hopefully, I won't need to use them. Oh, man, that would be frustrating and would put you in the brace position. We're doing everything possible to ensure you have a safe, stress-free flight. In the lead-up to the Easter Airport chaos, our management was working day and night. On their downward dog. Qantas executives and corporate staffers were enjoying a wellness festival involving yoga, Pilates and meditation. What? Is, this, is that some sort of the Qantas staff having some sort of uh, team bonding exercise? You know where the boss wants to basically spend some of that money so he doesn't have to pay as much tax. Uh, that's normally the way. So you send all your all your staff on a little retreat that does absolutely nothing. But it wasn't all yoga and Pilates. It was also Zumba. Monday, <laughs> uh, there was a meditation session. Tuesday, a Zumba class. For your safety, keep your seatbelt done up low and tight, just like our wages for ground staff, which we outsourced to a third party operator. And the outsourcing was unlawful. If it's unlawful, then surely they're not still doing it. That would be my key point. Uh, for morals uh, and ethics, surely that they are now, they've changed that because it's, they've been found out that it's unlawful. I don't know what the hell they're talking about, but something to do with outsourcing to, to make, so it's cheaper, basically, I would assume. Did I mention we also stood down 20,000 workers while also claiming $855 million in JobKeeper? Uh, oh, this just reminds me of Virgin and Richard Branson. Richard Branson, one of the richest people in the world was basically pleading for the government to give him extra money to pay his staff, even though he is one of the richest men in the world. I so hope Qantas didn't do the same or similar. You know, a big wealthy company <sighs> sacking all the staff because of COVID. This is the problem actually recently, is that airports and, and airlines, what they've gone and done is they, they let go all their staff but now they need to rehire staff because, well, the world's getting back to normal. And over here in the UK and, I, and possibly around the world, flights are being cancelled. Airports are struggling. I've seen uh, it's the start of the, the holidays over in Australia at the moment. And I've seen some of the airport queues and how busy it is. I'm going to assume Qantas and, and others all did the same. They let go of staff to try and save on costs. But now when things are back to normal, they're struggling to get to the same levels. Which sounds outrageous, but nothing a bit of Zumba couldn't fix. But while we have been downsizing, we've also been pivoting, introducing Qantas Accommodation. An innovative sleep solution located conveniently in the airport terminal. It's like Airbnb, but without the B. And the other B, it's the floor, you'll be sleeping on the floor. What? No way. Travelers booked on Dallas to Sydney flight forced to sleep on the floor after engineering issues caused delay. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. That just sounds like they were stuck in the airport, not in an actual uh, little room, almost like just in the airport. You know when people have to sleep on the chairs, even though they're all really uncomfortable. But hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. Good mm. night. <laughs> Ah, my back! <laughs> yeah, look, I know it's bad. We look bad. We'll do something about it. I don't know, uh, 
you can smoke on planes now. Do you like that? Oh, no. We're gonna do something. In April, we posted the worst airline industry performance statistics since recording began. But worse even than our budget subsidiary Jetstar. Hang on. The worst airline industry performance statistics since records began. Just 58.7% of Qantas flights arrived on time, beaten even by its budget subsidiary Jetstar on 59.2. That is awful. That's awful. Um, even Ryanair. Ryanair does better than that. Ryanair, when you land, will be like, bing bong, you have safely landed on time. And that's when you get people clapping for no reason. Uh, that is 58.7. That is shocking. I'm getting worried. It's a long flight to Australia as it is. Please don't take longer. We basically created a crappier version of ourselves just to make us look good. And now we're so crap, the crappy version is doing even better than us. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> anyway, uh, despite all of that, thank you for flying with Qantas. And remember, if the airport is congested, according to our CEO, it's your own fault for not being match fit. I mean, don't you even go to corporate Zumba? Oh, my back! Ah! <laughs> oh. Ah! Oh. God damn Qantas! Well, there you go. More from them. Um, it's got me a little bit worried. The, the, the stats that are worrying me the most is obviously the 56.7 or whatever it was uh, of delayed, you know, landing on time. That's that's a low percentage. Hopefully my baggage arrives as well because we cannot be going around without baggage. Uh, have you experienced any of these problems with Qantas? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping this is just just simply satire and, and less facts. No, they were using facts. Oh, I'm worried. I'm worried. Maybe I should have gone Singapore Airlines or Jet Easy? No, what am I? Easy, easy Jet. No, they definitely don't. BA, I don't know. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Have you had any problems with Qantas? Let me know. Like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.